You're watching Summer Games Done Quick 2016, benefiting Doctors Without Borders. We have a $50 donation from The Penguin. Comment says, as someone who owns the Sega Saturn version of Mega Man 8, I can vouch for its difficulty. We need to see this speed run. And I'm told we have about $1,000 left to go on that incentive. Please get those donations in soon. That game is coming up. There's only two more games and then Mega Man 8. You want to see the more difficult version of the game played on the Sega Saturn, featuring uh, Cutman and Woodman from previous Mega Man games as bosses? Then get those donations in so we can see that speed run. Uh, we, speaking of which, $15 from Kent says, Get hype for Mega Man 8 on best console. We have $10 from Bad Scribbler. I woke up and saw that Pepsi Man cutscenes aren't med. We need to watch some Pepsi Man cutscenes. We have $50 from Awe Dio. Let's see those extra bosses for Mega Man 8. Also, a few dollars to save the animals. Hashtag for Harambe. We have $100 from JKF. Enjoying the run so far. Best of luck to all runners. We have $10 donation from Deathy. Is it that time of the year again? This is my fourth GDQ watching, and I love the cause and the show that these runners bring onto the world stages, proving they're skilled enough to beat a game in the way it wasn't intended. Save all the animals, and I hope we have a lot of fun throughout the week. We have a $5 donation from Yeti. Yes, hi, hello. Sega Saturn is cool. We have $15 from Zareth. Shoutouts to Ivan, Leon, and DP, the best dudes to watch on Twitch. Money goes to Runner's Choice. Also, is Put Her There still going to be a thing?
we have an anonymous $100 donation. Awesome start to an SGDQ, and great to see this event get some mainstream press on Colbert's show. Keep up the awesome work, guys and gals. We have $10 from Spawn. Shout out to Drakewind for telling me about SGDQ. Lots of really cool games for a great cause. All right. Okay, so I guess we're ready to set go whenever. All right. Um, so for anything gets started, I do need to power cycle, but we're going to start off with Hagane, which if you've heard of it, you've probably heard of the price that the game typically goes for. Uh, the game itself is also quite difficult and uh, made news a couple of years ago, just uh, a couple of the famous YouTubers started to bring it up in the top 10 list in terms of uh, Super Nintendo difficulty titles. So. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get started in just a second, uh, so let's do a countdown, three, two, one, go. All right, so first off, backflip the game for a little while, and it's actually really important that I set this up right. Uh, the entire first stage is going to ha hopefully have the RNG manipulated and the sign that that flame just showed up means that I'm on the right track. So there's a lot of movement options in this game and you'll get to see each one plenty. Um, right now the black flip is pretty fast. Uh, it doesn't quite compare to what you'll see later as the slide and the tumble, but it's consistent and that's what we need for the time being. Two bombs coming up. All right. And one more bomb. All right, and now we are completely set. So this entire first pattern here sets up uh, the RNG so I get certain drops. In particular, I get a blue flame, which increases my max HP. And I also get three bombs, which I will need to make use of throughout. But we're not done yet. Mm -hmm. Gotta get through this stage. If I do this right, you should see that turtle turn around, next one will jump, and then a third turtle will also turn around. Uh, unfortunately, this is a... Oh, okay, it's a little bit off. But this is about as far as uh, the RNG manipulation goes. The rest is up to tumbles. All right. Just a, a few words about that. That vertical kick is the most powerful attack in the game. Um, most things do on the order of two damage. Uh, there we go. That vertical kick does 25, just to put that in perspective. But it also has an extremely narrow hitbox. So there's a lot that goes into trying to make sure you have proper cues to set that up. But uh, yeah, if you can land it, it is absolutely devastating to pretty much every boss throughout the entire game. But other than that, you have this air tumble. Moves at about the same speed as the slide, which you saw a little bit earlier too. And I'll need to use both of those in various situations just to keep things moving along. But uh, the main thing is there's a huge emphasis on maneuverability and getting to just the right place. Uh, most of the bosses, and I, <laughs> unfortunately it is just most, uh, are reliant on your positioning. So it should be pretty consistent to set up those vertical kicks whenever possible. But uh, you'll have some notable exceptions where I have to rely on luck to get through. For whatever reason, coming off of that stage, you wind up with left and right enabled. So it does a couple silly things, but first boss coming up. I got it. Yep. There we go. He has 50 HP, and uh, I just did 52, so he's done. All right, on to stage two, and this is this is really where it starts to get tricky. I'm going to show off all the tumble moves, which is a special uh, set of moves that you can do. The vertical kick is one of them. 
basically you see that I start flashing anytime I do forward flips. And that is entirely related to doing some special moves associated with them. I also, uh, I was a little bit late on telling you guys this, but uh, whenever I use bombs, the screen does a heck of a lot of flashing. If you are sensitive to that kind of stuff, you might want to limit your watching. This is probably the most difficult stage in the game, so we'll see what happens. Okay, we're good. There's a lot of very minor things that can go wrong, but a lot of the stuff in the stage is on a global timer. So if I'm just a little slow, everything is gonna be out of position and it's really gonna mess up uh, my path through it. But overall, we're pretty well. So just a little bit of the history on this game. Um, I started running this game, I wanna say 2012 or 2013. Um, at the time, there was a TAS available, uh, Tool Assistant Speedrun. There we go. Um, but there's several things in this game that you will not see me do at all that are pretty much restricted to a Tool Assisted environment. Uh, in particular, you can do some really fancy wall jumps and uh, zips, but doing them in real time is just going to get you killed. So instead, you come up with a lot of these creative skips where you're bouncing off of enemies to get to places that should otherwise be out of reach. And again, that's just thanks to the myriad number of ways that they give you to move around. This is the first RNG boss, so he has four patterns he can do. Only one of them allows me to hit him. And he's going to be generous. There we go. That's, that's a perfect boss. 25% chance of that. All right. Moving on to stage three. Um, this starts to be where we work on, there's some very specific uh, cutscene skips and you pretty much don't even know that they're happening. Um, for whatever reason, they allow you to... Just a second. One, two... Okay, and I should just fall straight in, yep. This is a really tough stage. Okay. Well, we've already messed it up. I... Okay. This is going to be a little bit of a problem. Uh, I'm going to go and actually pick up emergency supply, so mild detour. This stage, if this is the second most technical stage in the game, and if you do it well, it really looks fantastic. You'll just have to settle for looking okay right now. Okay. This mid-boss, I have a timing cue set up on the audio. should be good. All right. Cutscene skip right here. I just need to tumble into the next area and for whatever reason it saves almost two seconds. And done. And then next up we just have a bunch of auto scrollers. So I'll describe a couple of the other weapons that I'm not even using. So they give you so many options. Um, you've got these kunai, you've got grenades. They each have slightly different purposes. You also have this grappling hook which will make an appearance in the next stage. But um, they're, if I remember right, they're named after uh, some entities from Japanese mythology. Uh, I want to say that your sword is Seryu, uh, the kunai are Suzaku, uh, and then the bombs and grappling hook are Byako and Genbu. But for the most part, you'd never need to know that. And <laughs> once again, this is an incredibly rare and expensive game. Uh, especially if you start looking for things like the manual, which is the only place where you can find that kind of information. Um, the game itself 
typically sells, uh, I would say loose cart is something on the order of uh, $400 today. Um, I'm playing on the Japanese version right now. Uh, just, it is functionally identical. It's still fairly expensive for a Japanese cart, looking at something like $80, $90 nowadays. But um, pretty much it is the exact same game. The only difference is you get translated boss names. So should you ever want to find it, that's probably the, uh, the best approach. But uh, yeah, these are just a few auto-scrollers. The next stage begins a few more creative instances. Um, we also get reintroduced to that one fellow in stage two who spawned mini bosses. Um, he has some particular role here, uh, but the main thing is just that uh, he's included as kind of your foil. And the idea is that there's this, in this uh, kind of apocalyptic future, um, everybody that you're killing off is some variety of cyborg, including yourself. And it's a story of warring ninja clans as well. Uh, after that, I have no idea, but um, it's just a really fun game to get through. Okay, got him. On to stage four. This is this has been a pretty good run so far. I mean, getting the uh, the good luck on that one boss is honestly the start for any kind of run. Uh, and I was telling a little bit about the history of running this game. I was pretty much the first one to try doing real time runs. Um, after that, though, a number of people picked it up. Uh, most notably, uh, in probably 2015, 2016 timeframe, uh, Ohon picked it up of Mega Man fame. Uh, and he absolutely, well, he's a monster at pretty much any game that he plays. But for this game in particular, um, he found so many optimizations. And these are the kind of thing that it's just like you change up the path slightly and you gain half a second over the course of a stage and just pretty much every stage in the game had something like that that he came up with, so that really brought the time down uh, pretty immensely. Um, just even though there was no like new major skips or anything like that, so there's always things to be looking for, and that's just uh, advice. Speed running in general. Another audio cue? Got it. Goodbye, Snake. Poor guy. This stage has one of my favorite skips. Um, you'll you'll know exactly when it happens. All right. There we go. There we go. And that skips an entire like. 45 second segment of this stage. Just gotta grab onto some ceiling and jump off of a guy who's really doesn't want to be there. This boss has four distinct cycles, and luckily I only need to manipulate this first one. Uh, it's manipulated depending on where you actually stand when he starts spawning. So we're good. This one, I get to use another bomb, just warning. Yeah, now he's done. <laughs> it's kind of a tricky setup to get through all of that, but once uh, once it's pretty well practiced, like it works every time, and I don't have to worry too much. Um, where he actually goes on that first segment is somewhat random, but my positioning will make sure that I hit every possible location that he could spawn. And this is stage five. We're getting into the final stage. And they start to throw up some more creative things at us, but luckily, they also go for some creative stage design, which means creative jumps. But first, pile of enemies. Oop, okay. For whatever reason, this boss, this mini boss that I just fought, he still has an active hitbox immediately after you kill him, so have to be very careful about the explosion, but Doom Train, Doom Train is my favorite. He tries so hard. Gets out there with such gusto. All right. Okay. 5-1. Don't miss.
That should be good. Okay. Once again, we skipped a lot of stage. And done. So, one more mini boss. He has like a 1 in 8 chance of trolling me, and he didn't do it, so we're good. He has one movement pattern where that, that setup will not work. Everything else runs fine. And he gave me a bomb, too, so we, we should be good heading into the final two bosses. Okay. These stages aren't too bad relative to what I had to do in some of the earlier ones, but the main thing is I'm just glad I haven't died so far. Uh, those blue flames that I told you about, I got, well, I manipulated the one, and then the other is just in a stage that I pick up along the way. Um, but if you die, you lose those immediately. So we want to try and make sure not to have any deaths whatsoever to allow us to keep that maximum HP. But uh, here comes RNG boss number two. Once again, we have a one in four shot of getting the quick kill here. And I will have no idea whether I get it or not until his uh, core appears, which is the only vulnerable part. That should be good. Oh my gosh. He gave it to me! <laughs> that, is, that is a quick kill faster than the task is currently beast that boss. That is fantastic. We're gonna get ready on time, too. Time. <sighs> what was that? Are you serious? That ties my PB. <laughs> wow. So my, my PB is from 2013, so this is pre-Ohon strats. But still, like, that is, that's quite amazing to that it gave me good luck on both of those because missing the luck is the key thing there. Like, every missed pattern costs 8 to 15 seconds. So just the fact that I got through with perfect luck, that's, that's the only thing that allowed me to get there because um, I messed up 3-2 uh, pretty bad. But, you know, still a great time. Um, there's a few other people who run this. I think uh, there's Epically Epic and uh, Trogdor has tried this a little bit too. But uh, Ohon currently has the fastest time, 14.43. I'm not sure if there's a timing difference involved there. But uh, yeah, 15.31 I think ties the time that I currently have on SDA. So that's, that's pretty fantastic. Um, I'm just gonna let the credits play out. There is a second loop that comes up. Um, the only thing that changes is that they give all of the normal enemies and the mid bosses double health, which changes some interesting things just because all the mini bosses now have entirely different strats to take them out, but that's just how it goes. And um, yeah, I guess uh, after this, it'll continue on with the, the Omni block. We've got Skyblazer which is my first game, and you'll get to hear a lot more about that after we pop it in. But in the meantime, I guess we have time for some donation comments? We do. Uh, we have $5 from Ixius. Huge props to OmniGamer for making an insanely hard game look so easy and commenting by himself at the same time. Glorious! 